We've had a couple birds in the camp. There's been some yellow rump warblers. We've heard the white throated sparrows. You can pull. It's a boreal chicken. state of Minnesota's northernmost reaches lies an expansive haven for wildlife. Consisting of over 1 million acres of forests and lakes, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness is home to a wide variety of plants and animals. Among them are a plethora of bird species, including some that spend the year in the North Woods and others that use it as a nesting site. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and today I am in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in the Boreal Forest of Minnesota, right on the border of Minnesota and Canada. And I'm going to be looking for some of the bird species that are around here and taking you with me. Um, some of the stuff I've seen already um, is kind of the common stuff. You've had the white-throated sparrows, had the red-breasted nut hatches, and then had a uh, redneck grebe, which was pretty cool. But this is a really unique area because you get the breeding birds, like the warblers that come up here, and then you have the year-round residents as well, some of the migratory boreal species like finches, blue jays. So it's kind of a convergence of all these different species, which is really cool. And this environment is essential for these species to maintain the population, and it's absolutely beautiful up here. The beauty of the lush green forests are surpassed only by that of the crystal clear water and blue sky. This wilderness is a truly amazing place to search for birds. Some of the birds I'd say that we're going to see up here are going to be uh, the common loon, bald eagle, merlin is one I've seen a lot up here, common merganser, um, some of the warbler species such as American red start most likely, yellow rumped, but one of the birds I want to see the most is the boreal chickadee. They're really elusive and they're around here in some decent numbers but they're just hard to actually get a look at. So I'm really hoping to get a good view of a boreal chickadee this trip. I've had brief run-ins with boreal chickadees in the past, including my lifer during a winter trip to Minnesota a few years ago. These quick and crafty birds are even more difficult to find in the summer when the trees provide even more cover. One of the things that's really challenging actually about birding here is that it's so dense so you can hear a lot of the birds, but they just do not come out in the open. So if you're not great at a specific call or you're unsure about what you're hearing, it's kind of tough to get a look at it. So you can hear a ton of stuff. There's birds everywhere, but a matter of actually seeing and then identifying some of these species, it becomes a lot more challenging. With the thickness of the forest making it hard to see anything chirping in the woods, one of the best ways to find birds is by canoeing out on the lake. In addition to covering more ground, this allows for the viewing of birds on the shoreline or on the edge of the trees. Spending the day out on the lake, I encountered a lot of species in the air, such as turkey vultures, merlins, and bald eagles. On the rocks, song sparrows hopped from place to place, and in the trees, blue jays and yellow rumped warblers flew around the pine branches. Swimming on the surface were a few species of diving water birds, including common rugansers and common loons. After returning to camp, I was able to get a closer look at one of the loon families. I'm at the camp and we have one of the classic Minnesota species, common loon, and it looks like they have a juvenile also. Loons raise their chicks in the calm secluded lakes of the Boundary Waters before migrating back to the coast. These loons were still taking care of a juvenile. I even got to see them catching fish and presenting them to the young bird. The day ended with an absolutely beautiful sunset, but unfortunately, the next day brought about extreme wind gusts, turning the once calm lake into white caps and making it extremely dangerous to go out on the water. With the waves keeping me grounded, I looked around the campsite in hopes that the birds would come to me. I got a look at more red-breasted nuthatches and some of the insects visiting the camp. Some were quite intriguing, including the white admiral butterflies that seemed happy to flutter in spite of the wind, and an amazing lunomoth caterpillar presumably looking for a spot to make a cocoon. Later, I was walking around the camp when I heard a familiar call.
We've had a couple birds in the camp. There's been some yellow rump warblers. We've heard the white-throated sparrows. You can, oh, it's a boreal chicken. I hear him. He's up in these trees. I don't know if I'm gonna get a look at him. They're so hard to see. I'm gonna do my best though. Where is he? Well, there was a quick look at a boreal chickadee and it was probably one of the best videos I've ever actually gotten one, which is kind of sad because it was so brief, but first boreal chickadee sighted on the trip. <laughs> no more than 15 minutes later, the raspy little bird reappeared, this time staying for a bit longer. This is so cool, he's just right there. He's in some really thick stuff, but he's just chilling and looking at me and calling. This is the clearest looks I've gotten. Still really thick in there, but what an amazing bird. During my time in the Boundary Waters, I heard numerous boreal chickadees, but rarely did they allow themselves to be seen. Even so, this is one of the few places that I've encountered them regularly, even though their range dips into Wisconsin. So why is it that they are so much more difficult to find than the other chickadee species that inhabits Minnesota, the black cap? Here's our friend Leslie the Bird Nerd with a little more information on why the species seems so tough to find. The boreal chickadee is a little more elusive than the black-capped, mainly because it doesn't visit feeders as much and during the nesting season they tend to be quiet and secretive. Unlike the black-capped chickadee, these guys don't use their calls as frequently either, and their range is more remote. They are almost completely restricted to the boreal forests of Canada. In fact, 88% of the population breeds in the boreal forests. There are very few places in the U.S. that have them, which tends to be in the more northern locations of a few northern states. The chickadee DD call of these guys is raspier sounding than that of the black cat. I was lucky that the boreal chickadee just happened to pay the campsite a visit because otherwise, there was no way I would have been able to go out and find one in the dangerous conditions. Perhaps just getting time to sit in one spot and listen actually contributed to locating this often hidden species. Even with the high winds, I still enjoyed my trip to the Boundary Waters and the creatures that live in its boreal woods. I can't wait to visit again, and maybe even have a different target bird to search for. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Where did I go? Hey, I left you some noodles over there, buddy.